Okay, so today we're going to talk about oxidative phosphorylation and we're going to look at the electron transport chain in aerobic respiration. Right, okay, so here we have a matrix, okay, and we've got the intermembranal space and we have the 3 NADH and the 1 FADH from the Krebs cycle, okay, and the first thing to happen so what I would do, like you to do is just to note that down, please. So I would probably do a whole page, okay? I'll give you time to do that now. Okay. Number one, so you've got the reduced NAD and FAD, okay? And what happens is that the, uh, the hydrogen and the electrons dissociate. So we need to write down that they dissociate. So what all that means is that they dissociate the hydrogen, So I'll do hydrogen in red. So here's the hydrogen, and produced from that are electrons. Okay? So electrons. There we go. So NAD and FAD um, associates hydrogen and electrons. Now I'm going to talk about the ETC. So the electrons, okay, are going to be passed down. These carriers, now for AQA, you do not need to know what these carriers are, but they are carrier proteins embedded in the matrix membrane. And what's released are small amounts of ATP. Okay, so small amounts of ATP are released. So that's from a, the ADP plus a phosphate being added to make small amounts of ATP. Okay, and they travel down the electron transport chain, releasing ATP. Second point, I'm going to talk about the hydrogen. Okay, number two. Okay, now the hydrogen moves through the intermembrane space, space through a proton pump. So it's pumped through using the ATP, okay, and it's pumped through the proton pump into the intermembrane space. And there's lots of hydrogens. So what happens is you're going to get a pumped cross through a proton pump. And it's using ATP. Okay? Uh, four, you've got a high concentration gradient occurring. All hydrogens in the intermembrane space or hydrogen ions, I should say, in the intermembrane space than in the matrix. The hydrogen ions, because it's a higher concentration gradient, it can then move through ATP synthase, okay? And it moves through by facilitated diffusion. And as they move through ATP synthase, large amounts of ATP are produced. <coughs> We don't have to really go into the amounts of ATP, um, but you just need to know that large amounts of ATP are produced. So nitrogen goes back in. The main difference between this and photosynthesis is at the end of the process, you have oxygen. I'm going to do oxygen in green. Okay, so oxygen, there we go. So oxygen is known as what we call the final electron acceptor. So final electron receptor. And what I mean by that is, is that then the electrons, the spare electron, okay, from, from the ETC and the hydrogen <coughs> will go to the oxygen and you will produce H2O. So a molecule of water is released. Okay? So oxygen is the final electron receptor at the end of the ETC. It takes the hydrogen and the electron away through water. They're thus maintaining 
the concentration gradients. So obviously the Krebs cycle continues to bring hydrogen ions and electrons and the, if you don't have oxygen there, it won't, it will then all back up, you won't get any concentration gradients and therefore respiration stops very quickly. So without that oxygen receptor, you won't have uh, ATP being produced. And that is what we call oxidative phosphorylation related to the ETC. I hope you enjoyed that. There's going to be lots more videos coming on Dot Biology. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Right, you can stop that.